Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. What's happening guys? Dave here from Metal Epidemic, back with another album review and excitement is high. Excitement is high. Um, for this review, Duncan, Kyle and myself have been lucky enough to be checking out the brand new album from UK extreme metal pioneers Napalm Death. Band's new album Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism will be released on September 18th via Century Media Records. So... Napalm fucking death. <laughs> You've added a fucking in there, Dave. Yep. Yep. That's how they shall now be known going forward. <laughs> um about about to unleash album number sixteen, I think. I thought they I don't know what I genuinely thought Napalm Death had split. I, oh, I really? I, yeah. I've, I thought so too, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know where I read I, I I've clearly misread something somewhere mm. but i i would have put fucking money down that napalm death had split and when you then when you pretty much i think it was on one of the podcasts and then it was an upcoming release i assumed it was like a best of or a live album if you get like a best <laughs> of imagine that the best of napalm death buy it for father's <laughs> day um you know what i mean like uh, uh, you know <laughs> as, as if like and then when it came in, I was like, well, I don't recognise any song names, which, once again, I might as well put my cards on the table here. Um, I have been an inconsistent fan of Napalm Death, and uh, mm. I don't think I've ever listened to a full album more than once. Right? So, oh. well, I've listened to it through, and I'll probably never listen to it again, and that's not because I dislike them. Um, it's just Napalm Death I do a particular style of music that um, can be very imposing um, and at mm. times a bit me. and that's no offence don't come and beat me Barney I fucking love you right um, my mm. earliest memory of fucking seeing Napalm Death uh, is a, a video that used to play on remember Super Rock back in the day oh my god hands. and it was like you know, this song is called Incinerator, <laughs> Which, and and then they played, and it just sounded like the gates of hell opening and everyone being consumed by fire. Um, and I, you, I, I've always like whenever Napalm Death is mentioned, Davy's face appears like in my mind because I know Dave is a massive Napalm Death fan. Um, so I, I mean, I didn't know what to expect by this because you're right in saying Pioneers and 16th album and they've been around yeah. since forever I don't think there's ever been a yeah. time period that Napalm Death hadn't existed so the thought is what did Napalm Death bring to the table on album <coughs> number 16 that they haven't brought in the 15 albums before and I'll tell you what they brought Dave a Napalm Death album that I've listened to four times so <laughs> oh, uh, shit. <laughs> so there you go that's what they've done straight away this is this is modern. Like, mm. th th there's so much going on here, which I think pays like specific attention to the the roots for sure. But there are some big old fucking nasty hanging balls on this album, just <laughs> battering you about the face. Track five, right? Like, I like to see that I had a hard on listen to that. I had to beat it down with a fucking stumpy mallet. Um, <laughs> Joie de ne pas vivre, I think is how you pronounce it. Probably not, because I'm Scottish. Um, I sounded like I was ordering a pizza in Paris. Uh, but, like, it was dirty. <laughs> it was industrial. It was, yeah. like, it just it, it has, it, like, the production on it just made me want to shower after listening to it. <laughs> and it came out of fucking nowhere. But the it's the variety that, and maybe I've just never appreciated their, their writing on albums before maybe it's time to, to reappraise the back catalogue of Napalm Death but mm. this is an album bursting with variety and changes in pace and changes in like ag aggression and I just want to say changes in aggression because the bass level is aggression here vocally mm. it's fucking punishing <laughs> like yeah. he's always had a great voice 16 albums though yep. fucking 
Oh, and the 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 production, and the and this is not the, once again. This is of a genre of music that doesn't lend itself to longer albums. But this album clocks in as well over forty minutes. Um, and all these songs are a bit longer than you would necessarily expect from the genre, but it's just bursting. Zero Gravitas Chamber. Uh, don't even know where it is on the album, but I, I took a note of it because when I heard it the first time, my face was like, you, you've all seen it before. Uh, Dave sends me this gif regularly. There's a gif that flies around of Patrick Bateman doing that, ooh, kind of, you know, that's, mm. that's kind of <laughs> sexy face. Ooh. Or that and that's how my face went when listening to it and what I realised is I was doing that more and more throughout it I yeah. am no purist when it comes to grindcore Dave I'm no purist when it comes to noisecore I'm no purist when it comes to Napalm Death um, I wouldn't even necessarily class myself as a fan of the band per se but off the back of this album they now have on their 16th album a brand new <laughs> fan and I'll tell you right now I bet you they're glad for it. You've got me, guys. I'm in the fucking bag. 100% Team Napalm. Let's bring it on. Love the smell of it in the morning. Woo! <laughs> I did. I, like, yeah. I was floored. I was floored by this. I'm, now, I'm not as floored as Dave, because Dave's going to be fucking spent when he's finished talking about it. And that's why I got my way first here, because you're just going to hear Dave ejaculate for the next it's that tantric ejaculation for the next ten minutes, as he loses his voice and telling you how much he loves it but, I was, I mean I was I shocked. saw him stand up to get some water earlier and he's already taken off his pants Yeah, he did, in anticipation uh, but yeah, I literally like from front to back, I think this is a fucking brilliant album Yeah, uh, I, 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 was, I was shocked as terrible, because it makes it makes, like it makes it sound like they didn't have it in them and I'm sure that if you're a Napalm fan then they've had it in them all along and delivered it many, many times over. This is the first mm. album that I've heard from Napalm Death that genuinely grabbed me by the testicles from the front of the song um, to the last end, <laughs> last note on the last song and just made me really excited to listen to them. Uh, yeah, so I was, yeah, that, I, I mean, I, I would probably lean in more when, when you guys... Uh, are finished talking but yeah I th- like if you do yourself one favour this week uh, you check out the new Napalm Death album if it's not on your list if your eyes are rolling because you're like those old guys like these old guys have got fucking fire <laughs> still and it's vicious it's about as angry and pissed off an album I've listened to the la- in the last month easy mm. and that's all yep. I'll say about that Dave thank you Duncan <sighs> um <sighs> oh Okay, take off your pants, get yourself <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> we call that pulling a Davy. Sit back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just oh, I don't even know where to start with this. Um, yeah, sixteen albums is, is mind blowing enough. Like over thirty years of being a, in a band together. Imagine being in a band with the guys for over thirty years. Like what the I've, fuck? I've been your friend for twenty, and I'm already exhausted. I know. I'm <laughs> sick of the sight of you. And like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, mean, I got I, I got in the metal about what, mid nineties, um, and I remember being introduced to the Diatribes for the first time. And just being like, who the who the fuck is this? Like, I I need this in my life right now. Um, and when I was like reading the the press material that came from the album, it listed all the, like their previous albums, and I'd forgotten how many of these albums I actually owned over the years. Mm. Um, un- unbelievable. And I went on this like Napalm Death binge after reading all these <laughs> albums. Like, oh, I've not listened to that in years or that. And I went back and listened to a lot of their old stuff. Um, and it's like it, it, it kind of brought it to my attention like how far these guys have come in terms of, of their sound. Like when you, you listen to albums like, I don't know, like from Enslavement to Obliteration or, or Fear, Emptiness, Despair, to where we are now, it's it's quite astounding, actually. Like there's to me, there's no other band sound like Napalm Death. Mm. There, are, there are lots of bands that are influenced by them and you know some will try to replicate them, but for me, there's no one sounds like the band themselves. They are a very original sounding band. Um, for this album, they they were reunited with uh, tried and tested producer Russ Russell, 
who we've spoke about on you know previous shows His and reviews just and keep stuff. Repeating and repeating, I love it. I know. Yeah, uh, they've been working with him since like for the last twenty years or so, um, and he's done a, a stellar job to be honest. So understandably, they've they've opted for his production skills once again. Uh, he worked on the band's last album, Apex Predator, Easy Meat, back in twenty fifteen. Uh, but even though there's like there's been this five year gap between like Apex and, and this album, when you listen to to both of those albums, it doesn't necessarily feel like there's been this huge gap between them. Mm. Like the albums feel like this album feels like a very kind of natural follow up to Apex Predator. Um, but I was reading somewhere that the like a lot of the groundwork for this album started back in 2017. So. I don't know, that might explain why I felt like the albums felt almost kind of linked in a way. Yeah. Um, but like, this new album, let's talk about this new album. What I loved about this new album, and I loved a lot about this new album, <laughs> is like Napalm Death, <clears throat> they always keep like these core elements right, you know, of their sound. You can always expect records to be aggressive, confrontational, and extreme. You know what I mean? They're always there. Checkboxes are always ticked for those. Uh, but I love how there's like there's all these other elements and influences that kind of bleed into each album. And like as intense as this is, and it, and it is an intense album, there's a ton of melody and yeah. experimentation on this on this album. Um, even for the first track, like the first track's called "Fuck the Factoid," and I felt like that <laughs> first track was a really good like representation of the album. It's got like everything about this album all kind of rolled into one. Mm-hmm. You've got the grind aspects, you've got the hardcore punk attitude and like ferocity. You've got the, the mid pace groove that gives it a bit of balance, but it's also coated in this like gloomy melody from the guitars that adds this whole other dimension to the track. Um, and actually, when I first listened to it, when I heard that first track, my mind actually went right to the new track from Anal Nathrak that we did a reaction to yep. a couple of weeks back uh, in Darkenment. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily that the tracks you know sound the same, but more just how they they kind of managed to fuse such extreme styles like the, your kind of metal grind and hardcore punk with this like ominous melody that, that almost gives it like a hook like a catchiness yep um and, and that melody that i'm talking about is it's blended right through this album like the band i've spoken in the past have been influenced by bands like killing joke and joy division and stuff and you can hear little tinges of those bands in the kind of melodic elements on like tracks like contagion or, or even the, the single they released uh immoral um, you know, it's got a bit of a almost like a post-punk thing going on, mm-hmm. um, and the tracks on this this album they, they aren't formulaic like in structure at all. You know, they're very, um, you know, they're not they're not following like a typical like pop song structure. It's very much an album that has plenty of kind of twists and turns, but the fact they're still able to make material like this so memorable kind of shows. How good these guys! How good these guys are at their craft. You know what I mean? It's it's quite mind blowing actually. Um, I've got some highlights, but I'll let Kyle speak for a bit because I realise I've just spoken for a very long time. So, <laughs> Kyle, what what are you making of the the new Napalm Death release? I think I first heard Napalm Death when I was I, don't know, I must have been thirteen or fourteen years old. It's been it's been a long time living with Napalm Death, and <coughs> they've been pretty consistent in the way they release albums like it's been good and then okay and then great and then good and then okay and then great you know and this is this put me on the floor with just how great it is Mm. i think this might be their best one i don't know what they've done i don't even know how to classify them in a genre anymore after (laughs) listening to this it's just like that fifth track the french one that i'm not going to try and pronounce because i'm not going to insult the french but it's (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just, it's so it's got so much going on but in such a simple way it's mm-hmm. like okay yeah it's definitely metal and it's definitely grindy death metal but it's got like such an industrial screen going on in the background and the production is so fr- fucking good and it's just I just, I don't know it blew me away from minute one it reminded Fuck, me the factoid came out I, I, it's like the, the kind of the industrial element side of thing it re- yeah. reminded me of and we've spoken about the band before to an extent, like Author and Punisher use a, mm. a ton of, they, they use weird instrumentation and like and like actual factory noises to make their thing. But like to me, if 
if someone interviewed Author and Punisher and asked them what their influences were and they didn't mention bands like Napalm Death, then I would probably call them a liar. They've definitely got that yeah. kind of grind element about them, or at least a mentality towards it. So to hear it yeah. kind of bleed in the other way around um, on this one, I think is the thing that's... And the placement as well. I, I think that's that's what floored me, is like... Uh, by track four, I was already like we we went on a bit of a journey, and then it was a vicious fucking curveball because I was waiting almost all the way through that track for the guitars to become the prominent part <laughs> of the, and it never happens. But it doesn't yeah. lose no. any of its fucking heaviness of, at all. If anything, it, it, I mean, it's heavier without the guitars. The guitars are kind of yeah. buried in the back, and it's, and I I never I, I had picked up on it, but I maybe. I hadn't given it enough credit, Dave, but I think maybe that's why it's gravitated more to me, is that it was the same when we listened to the, the, the you know, Natarak song, and I, I come off it really, really kind of buzzing, because there was there was something finally in it that hooked me, to grab me. Mm. I think you're right, there's a, a dark gloominess that is is through it, but it's not, it's so well done. It's, it's not like, hey, here's a new element, listen to it, it's all like, in the, it's there, but it's not at the, the, the detriment to the sound it's like this yeah. nice little add-on <laughs> like, it's yeah. like it's like when you it's like when you it's like when you go for like I don't know you go to stay uh, at a hotel Dave and you, you know you pay a little bit extra and you get like a, a little massage with a happy ending you know what I mean <laughs> um, uh-huh. it's like a nice welcome add-on and that's kind of what this album has it's a nice welcome add-on I cut you out Kyle and you can tell me to shut up uh, but yeah you were talking about <laughs> no. how, how Dave was like overselling the album just a little bit. <laughs> just a bit yeah <laughs> just a tiny little bit <laughs> best album you think they've ever released yeah I, I think so yeah. I mean like like I said I've been I've lived with Napalm Death for a long time and I love them but this made me love them more I didn't know they had it in them and it just they've still got something and i think maybe they've even got more after this as well there was no i couldn't think of a weak point of this album at all it was just surprise after surprise after surprise and it was just like oh shit they've they've hit something and it's great so i really hope they carry on like this and and i like that they're not afraid to do stuff either they're not afraid to put new things in or try an idea or take something right out of one of their more far-reaching uh influences like joy division or anything like that and just go yeah just stick it in see if it works because it does yeah so yeah i think you're nah, totally right. i hated it <laughs> <laughs> giving this one a big thumbs down <laughs> <laughs> um no I, I i totally hear what you're saying um it's, it's an album for me that's like full of highlights um and I could I could go on at length about each track on this album because yeah I think I kind of feel like as you said like each track has its own like characteristics mm. and unique markings that kind of make them different from one another. Um, yeah, it really does. But you know they all kind of stood out for some reason or another. Um, a couple of the ones that, that I really enjoyed uh, backlash just because um, it's track two I think on the album. Um, the, the riffs on that thing are just monstrous like. Very, very cool um, rhythm to listen to as well. It's got a really kind of good drive to it, uh, partly because of the bass line, actually. But um, it's again, it's got that kind of melody that sits underneath the, the kind of pacier parts of the track. And I just love how they like intertwine these two opposites. Like that, you've got the kind of kind of violent, hostile sections with this melody. Um, it's such like a kind of captivating contrast, and one that they execute extremely well. Um, I love that track. You, you guys have been talking about the Joy de, Joy de Nous Pavivre. Pav, <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what I've found really quickly is I, I might be the most authentic French sounding person on this podcast, which is worrying because my I, I'm famous for getting things pronounced wrong. <laughs> uh, joy, joy de Nous Pavivre. Yeah. Joy, joy de Nous Pavivre. Right, Something I, like that. I don't even know what that is. Seems Australian, did. Uh, so I don't know what the fuck you're doing there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, again, ap- of... apologies to the French. Um, <laughs> we know not what we do. Um, regardless of the song title, um, I loved it. I thought I loved that those kind of industrial tones. You know, it's still got the kind of uh, like punkier tempo mm. and rhythm. As you said, it's not a, a riff-based track at all. 
Um, it's more kind of layered with atmosphere and all those kind of odd sounds and mechanics. But um, again, like along with the vocal lines, it's still weirdly memorable. Like it's so bizarre, but and it, because it's like it's it's less like riffy, um, it works really well in the middle of the album as well. That kind of gives you that couple of minutes of like reduced intensity as well. Mm -hmm. um, Another one that's quite interesting was Invigorating Clutch. Uh, it's one of the kind of slower tracks on the album. Um, kind of reminded me of some of the kind of slower material for bands like uh, like Hellhammer. It's quite like repetitive in its structure, but it, it really works and it's a, a really good setup for the next track, which is the one you mentioned earlier, Zero Gravitas Chamber, mm -hmm. um, which is just an absolute ripper. Like the, yeah. the blasts on that track are just inhuman, ridiculous. Um, it's Patrick Bateman face. I told you. Like, <laughs> totally is. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, Fluxing of the muscle, uh, which is a great uh, track title. Another one that's really it's got this kind of Moorish groove to it. A really cool rhythm. Uh, it put me in mind of a, a little bit of some of the, the kind of groovier material from Pig Destroyer actually, mm. um, which is it's never a bad thing. Um, but to be honest, that there's there's no bad tracks on this. Like I listened to. It, well, maybe about five, six times, um, and it's like it's more addictive than meth. Like I'm just fucking <laughs> so into that. Um, not that I've not that I've tried meth, but I've heard, to, I've heard it's pretty addictive. Oh, um, dear. I don't do drugs, kids. Um, but th this, on the other hand, like um, Your voice betrays that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> <Honest>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is this is fucking awesome, uh, and and I dug Apex Predator, but this for me is Napalm Death at their very best. Um, it's just as punishing as Apex, but its its hooks go far deeper than that album did, um, and I cannot get enough of it. Cannot get enough of it. Um, yeah, as I said, I, I could talk for hours on this album, to be honest, but I'm, I'm trying to keep it to a reasonable length of, of review. But uh, let's let's talk about ratings. What we're we thinking uh, for this new album from Napalm Death. Out of five, what are we scoring this release? Well, here's here's the interesting thing. I was I was going to be the big Davy on N minor for this and come in at a 4.5. Uh, and then, as we've been talking through it, I've realised that I really want to listen to the album again. <laughs> like, <laughs> just I really want to listen. There's so much... I'm, I, I'm probably the most shocked here because I am the most inexperienced with, with Napalm Death. Um, and I'd written them off so much that I thought they'd broke up. <laughs> so, um, and uh, you know, I've listened, I listened to it for the first time yesterday, and as we sit today, uh, that's four listens in in that time period. And I'm going to listen to it a lot more. And yeah, to me, it, it, without going back through all their albums, as it stands, this is the best Napalm Death album for pretty much every reason everyone said. And mm. With that in mind, uh, and from the way it makes me feel right now, I'm coming in with a five, Dave. So I'm going to I'm going to put that extra point. I'm going to put that extra point five in there, kind of like you should have done when minor. But we'll let you know. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I, I think, like I said, if there is one album you listen to this week after listening to us talk shape for 35 minutes about an album, <laughs> uh, almost as long as the album itself, ladies and gents, go and check out the new Napalm Death album. It will reward you. Fivefold, so and that's what I'm giving it five. So there you go. Nice, my man, Kyle. What are you thinking? Well, there's no way I can outdo Duncan now. <laughs> I mean, it's out of five, but I want to give it a six out of five because it was just that good. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, within the structure of the re of the review, you know, thing, five out of five, definitely. It can't be anything but. It's just. Yeah. I mean, you can hear napalm, it. I just uh, take the napalm death yeah. approach. Fuck the system and give it a six. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Six out of five. <laughs> You're goddamn right. Six out of five. Excellent. Next one. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's again, it's a five out of five for me. Um, thoroughly enjoyed this album front to back. As I said, I, I couldn't find any faults or weak tracks on this release, um, and it's one that. As you've said, Duncan, I want to go back to it more and more. Um, such a, an addictive, infectious album. Um, 
it's, it's, it's got the heaviness, it's got those core elements I was talking about, but there's so much other stuff going on in this album that make it great. Um, yeah, it's one of these bands, like, I, I, I can't wait to hear where they go next, you know what I mean? <laughs> album 17. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Absolutely. No band, 16 albums, and should be releasing something like this. No, no. band. So, there you go. No. <laughs> fucking flown me. Loved it. Um, <clears throat> if you guys want to check this out and you really should check this out um, it drops on September 18th on Century Media the album is called Throws of Joy and the Jaws of Defeatism I'll put some links in the description below uh, to the band's Facebook and any pre-orders that are available um, let us know what you think when you hear it when it drops on the 18th um, stick some comments in the description in the bit below uh, love it, hate it let us know what you think always happy to hear your opinions um, we'll be back with another review very soon guys um, but until then, take care and we'll speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.